Good morning, everybody. It is Monday morning. It's Easter Monday. Sam, how was your Easter? Really good. How was yours? It was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't get up to anything too crazy. Got out, had a picnic in the park. I don't know. Enjoyed time. Um, yeah, so today we're out flying again here. Just doing a little bit more practice. Um, yeah, it's a, a bit of a rainy day. Um, it's going to be kind of different. I'm going to go under the hood today, which is... <laughs> This is going to be interesting, and Sam's going to kind of try and talk me through it and see if I can manage to, you know, do the stuff that I need to under the hood, so. <laughs> We're going to do that in a few minutes. Um, later this week, I'm super excited. I hope it works out, fingers crossed. Um, I'm supposed to be doing a test flight in a Bell 505. Um, Bell is coming out to do a bunch of test flights with different people, and uh, so they asked if, uh, if I wanted to do one as well. I said yes, absolutely, because I'd love to be able to compare the Bell 505 with the R66. Um, obviously, I've flown the R66 a fair bit now, flying it around the world, and uh, just having it here in our operations and stuff like that. So I'm just curious to find out um, sort of what the main differences are. Um, there's obviously, um, you know, a big cost difference between the two. Um, I wanted to see, you know, what the performance is like between the two. Um, so just, I'm going to do my best uh, for your guys' sake to do sort of a real comprehensive review between the two aircrafts, comparing them, trying to compare apples to apples because theoretically they're in the same market. Um, so trying to see uh, how they do compare. That's going to come. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the video out later this week or what. Um, I'm going to do hopefully the 505 flight on Thursday is what it's booked for. And, uh, Power Surveillance change on, right? Papa two. So if I can do the 66 flight this week as well, um, and try and just do uh, some comparisons. I don't know what they're going to allow me to do. If we can pack the helicopter up full of uh, five people, uh, take it up to the mountains if the weather's decent, that would be fun, uh, just to sort of test its limitations, see what it's capable of and stuff like that. But I don't know, we'll see. Um, so that's going to be, stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming later. But uh, why don't we, for now, get under the hood. All right, guys, so here we are back in, uh Action with Misha under the hood. <laughs> so you wanted me to climb to 1,500 feet, you said? Yep, so we're working on getting up to our altitude. Okay. Told him to climb to 1,500 feet. He needs to maintain 80 knots. Okay, 80 knots. And then we're going to adjust your heading here. Okay. We're going to do a heading of three... Uh, let's do actually three four zero. Three four zero. Okay. Okay. So trying to do three four okay. zero. Trying to get up to fifteen hundred feet. All right. So I'm still got to climb. All right. There's fifteen hundred. Trying to get eighty knots. Okay. Trying to get fifteen hundred. Three four zero degrees. I'm just Locking gonna talk out loud good. what I'm uh, what I'm doing here. So I'm doing my scan, checking my airspeed there. There's just about eighty knots. I'm about 40 feet, 35 feet high, so I'm gonna just start descending. A couple degrees off my heading there, uh, so I'm gonna get back on that. I'm one uh, knot slow, so I gotta speed up a little bit. I'm 20 feet high, I gotta lower the collective. I'm on my heading pretty much, there's my 80 knots, and I gotta climb about 20 feet. Okay, just about on my heading. Oh, lost my 80, there's 79. Okay, I'm about, eh, about 15 feet low, so I'm gonna set that up there. Um, pretty close to my heading. Um, trying to do 80 knots. Wow, I'm really fast. I'm 83 knots. Let me slow that down. There's 1,500 feet. All right, three, four, zero degrees, and I'm two knots slow. Got to speed that back up. I'm about ooh, I'm 50 feet high. That's horrible. Okay, let's get it back to three, four, zero degrees. And this is hard, man. I'll tell ya. <laughs> I'm Oops. trying to get him over some water so we can see how he does over water because he Oops. always does that to me, so now it's my turn. Those students have a hard time, man. I just always uh, <laughs> I just always like laugh and like, oh yeah, come on you guys, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> okay, so getting her back to 80 knots here, back to 1500 feet, and over 3, 4, 0 degrees, there comes 80, there comes 1500, 3, 4, 0. 82 knots, 1500 feet. Trying to get on 340. So this is a, something that I teach on a regular basis, you guys, is you gotta keep your scan going. So I'm kind of verbalizing the scan right now. Um, so I'm looking at these three main instruments at the moment, and I'm just scanning through them. I'm always coming through my artificial horizon uh, just to confirm that everything's still okay. 
but uh, just got to keep that scan going, going, going. Your eyes never dwell on one instrument for more than one second, all right? And we're not trying to teach true instrument flying here to go fly instrument procedures or anything, but what we're doing here is trying to save your life if you end up uh, finding yourself accidentally, inadvertently in cloud. So uh, that's kind of what we're after right now. And so there's 81 knots, there is 1,510 feet, 340, okay, I'm a little bit low, a little bit high, sorry, a little bit slow, a couple more knots here. And so if you can keep that active scan going, if you can stay calm, and you can keep those numbers within, you know, 20 or 30 feet, then about two or three knots, about five degrees or so, um, you're going to be able to save your life. So you can get the helicopter out of... Uh, it's bad control essentially, so out of its uh, unusual attitude is probably what you're going to end up in if you accidentally fly into cloud. And so if you can get yourself out of that, why don't we practice that, Sam? So why don't you take control? Alright, we're going to do a radio call here. Okay, go for it. State Falls traffic helicopter cabri G2 Ekaloon Papa, just west of State Falls, 1,500 feet heading northbound. Okay. All right. So, you want to do a recovery from an unusual attitude? Yeah, that's what I'd like to do, yeah, just to show everybody what that looks like. So, why don't you take control? Okay. I have control. Okay, you have control? Yep. And... How do you want to do it, though? Yeah, so, you have control, that's good. I'm going to close my eyes. So, we'll do this here. Alright, so I am closing my eyes, you guys can all see my eyes are closed, I'm going to put my head down. And what Sam's going to do here is he's going to get the helicopter completely out of control and I'm just kind of going to move my head around a little bit. So what happens is uh, your inner ear, the balance of your inner ear, um, starts getting all messed up when you're uh, getting yourself out of control. So this is simulating inadvertently flying into cloud right now. And um, so now you kind of go into this freaked out panic mode. Your inner ear gets all imbalanced and uh, so you have no concept like right now, we could be upside down. I'd have no clue. <laughs> We're not. I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling some G-forces. I'll let you guys see what's going on outside. <laughs> I can't see anything. But I can definitely feel, wow, I can feel some G-forces right now. Oh, I think we're going to die. <laughs> I think I might get sick. No. <laughs> um, and All so, right, you ready to recover? Yeah, okay, I'm going to give okay, you the camera Recover in here. three, two, one. Okay, I have control. Eyes are coming open. Okay, roll. Pitch, whoa, pitch a little high, roll, pitch. Airspeed is 60, I'm gonna bring it up to 80. Power, power is gonna come up to about 80% for now. Roll, pitch, airspeed, power, trim. Pedals are neutral, and altitude. Okay, I'm down at 1,000 feet. I'm gonna start a nice gentle climb. So I've got the helicopter sort of under control at the moment. I'm at 85 knots, I gotta slow that down a little bit to 80. I'm gonna bring my power, ah, this power's up pretty high. If I can get it to 80 knots, there we go, she'll start to climb. And uh, I'm gonna go back to my heading there, about three, four, zero degrees. Yep, that'll work. And then once I know, okay, the helicopter's under control and everything's gonna be okay, then I can start thinking, okay, how did I get myself into this cloud? If I do a nice, gentle 180 degree turn and maybe descend a bit, I can get this helicopter back out of those clouds. So that's kind of the, the main idea with the whole thing. Um, I'm actually gonna slow down just a little bit if it's all right with you. Sounds I'm gonna good. go to about 70 knots because I'm not climbing as fast as I'd like to be and I don't know if there's any terrain around. So I'm gonna slow it up to 70, get back on my 340 degrees. There's 1500 feet. Okay, so I'm gonna level out, get it back to 80 knots now. And this is really weird because like I can't see anything outside and I think you have me over water or something. And, um, and so I'm really having to rely on just what I see, like my body, my inner ear is still telling me that I'm spinning, and, <laughs> like it's really messed up. All right, we're gonna change your heading, so okay. hopefully this will <laughs> help you out a little bit. Okay. Heading of 360. Okay, so we're going uh, to a heading of north. Now when you do your turns, you wanna make sure that you're not gonna turn more than about 15 degrees or so. So that's uh, that's about 15, 14 degrees right there, wow. All right. It looks like you might yeah. have... Uh... I blew past my heading there, so let's go back here. How's your altitude looking? Altitude's high. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm still all over the place here. Okay, so let's get it back to 80 knots. I, I haven't been scanning, so that's uh, that's the honest truth there. Let's go to, let's go to 80 knots. <laughs> I'm gonna start a descent for 1,500 feet. 
and there's my 80 knots, there's my heading, and I'm gonna keep that descent going. So power's coming down. Um, I'm adjusting my speed with my cyclic and my altitude with my collective. And I'm trying to keep those two controls sort of as separate as possible. I find that really, really critical. They do affect each other, of course, but if you can try and keep them sort of separated, that's gonna be really helpful. Yeah, so. you're really dialing in your height again, your, your speed's good, your heading's good. Yeah, it's starting to come together because the scan is getting really active. So there's my 80 knots. Uh, there's my heading of north. I'm 1,560 feet. Okay, we're gonna so. adjust the heading just slightly here. Okay, I'm gonna start a right-hand turn. All clear to the right. Clear right. Okay, so keeping my 80 knots, getting that turn going. I'm gonna roll out before I get to my heading this time. I'm gonna keep watching that. There's my heading. I'm gonna roll out and I'm a couple knots slow. I'm gonna get her down to 1,500 feet. I'm not quite there. Okay, and so we're gonna there's... we're gonna adjust your heading again here. Okay. We're gonna do a heading of east. Okay, I'm gonna start a right hand turn. Zero. Okay, I'm going into a nice gentle turn, 80 knots. There's 1,500 feet, and I'm gonna hold kind of a rate one turn. Rate one is about 10% of your airspeed plus seven degrees. So I'm getting a little fast in that turn. About 83 knots. I'm descending a little bit as well, so adding a little bit of power. And coming through to that heading, there's 1,500 feet, there's 80 knots, and here comes my heading. Okay, good. Rocky Point traffic helicopter, Capri G2, actually and pop over Rocky Point, 1,500 feet heading eastbound. Okay, there's 80 knots, trying to hold my 1,500 feet, and trying to hold my heading there. Okay, cool, getting back to 80 knots. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're getting me over water here again. <laughs> okay, so this is like true flying in cloud for now for me now because you always have a little bit with this hood. You always have a little bit of reference uh, when you look out the side windows. Like you try not to, but uh, you always have a little bit of something. But when you get over water, if you can get over a, a low fog patch or something like that, um, you literally feel like you have no reference whatsoever, and it's exactly like flying in real clouds. So. Uh, this is fun. So I'm a little bit slow here, and I'm a little bit high, so I'm at uh, 77 knots, 1,560 feet. Let's get the speed back up a little bit. All right, you want to do another recovery from an unusual altitude? Sure, we can do that. All right. Okay, I'm going to take this. You have control? I have control. Okay, you have control. I am closing my eyes here again. Whew, still recovering from the last one. <laughs> Good thing I had breakfast this morning. <laughs> All right. So right now, I feel like we're in a right-hand turn. This is gonna be fun. I'll show you guys what's going on. I'll keep my eyes closed. And okay, so we're going into a left turn. We're going into a dive. Oh, uh, now we're at a trim. Um, I feel like we're maybe, uh, maybe level right now. Um. Let me think here. Kind of feels like we're in a gentle right turn. And now we're definitely out of trim. Um, I feel like the nose is up and now it's pitching down. Now we're diving at the ground. I feel like we're flying straight, straight though. Okay, uh, now it feels like we're nose left and down a little bit. I have no idea, like, <laughs> we could be flying backwards for all I know. <laughs> we're definitely not uh, nose left. Okay, <laughs> it feels to me like we're really left pedal right now. <laughs> and like crabbing crazy sideways. <laughs> like whatever you're doing is definitely working. Cause wow, this is like, yeah, pretty trippy. <laughs> Are right. you ready to recover? Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna give this okay, over to you. Three, two, one, recover. Okay, I have control, eyes are coming open. Oh wow, we're in a big bank. Roll, pitch, airspeed, uh, 84 knots. Power, power's at 78, 
trim. Uh, we've got a little bit more turn there. Okay, trim. And altitude, 1,080. I'm going to start a climb. I'm going to start a left-hand turn back to our safe heading. So is traffic all clear left? Clear left. Okay. Now, obviously, if I was in cloud, I wouldn't know that. But um, I'm going to go back to that heading that I felt was safe originally. Going for a nice right one turn to the left. And trying to hold 80 knots. Trying to get a climb back to 1,500 feet. Just because that's where I knew that I was sort of in a safe altitude. Um, okay. Got about 75 knots on my speed right now, which is going to help out my climb a little bit. Going to keep that turn going. There's only about a 10 degree bank. And 70 knots there, a little bit slow. Hey, like traffic helicopter cabbage G2 echoing Papa, just east of Rocket Point. I'm to 1,500 feet. We're going to be heading northbound. Okay, that turn was a little steep. I got into a okay, 20 degree bank. we can keep the bank. turn going. We'll, we'll okay. head northbound here. Okay, uh, keep the turn going. All right, watch my nose dive. Trying to, I'm at 1,560 feet. So trying to get back to 80 knots. And this is like fully relying on what I'm seeing, you guys. Like there's no, I can't rely at all on what I'm feeling because my, my ears are just kind of telling me all kinds of weird stuff right now. Um, so I'm high. Up. I'm trying to get back to 80 knots. I'm trying to descend here 1,500 feet. You just literally have to rely on the basics. You have to go back to the numbers and say, okay, I don't care what I feel like, if I'm fast or whatever, like I need to rely on what I'm seeing. And it shows me I'm doing 80 knots, so I have to trust I'm doing 80 knots. Uh, 1,580 feet, so not bad. I keep trying to bank left. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, I'm trying <laughs> to get back on that heading there. Um, Okay, I want to get back to 80 knots, which is going to help get me to 1,500 feet as well. Okay, we're going to adjust the heading again. Okay, sounds good. Heading of 320. Okay, sounds good. Starting a left turn, 1,500 feet, 80 knots. Okay, 1,500 feet, no, a little high, 80 knots. Trying to keep that turn going all the way, all the way to my heading. All right, there she comes. And trying to do 80 knots, 1,500 feet. Whew. All right. There she is. It's close. Got to keep working it. Never, ever, ever is your job done when you're on flying on instruments, unless you have autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> then your job's pretty easy. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, you're always working. Like, you're never at the point where you need to be which is kind of a funny life principle. It's like you're always always trying to perfect something and work on something, but you'll never get to perfection. Um, so trying to hold 80 knots here. I'm a little bit low now. My heading's looking not bad. I'm still descending. Going a little bit fast, which probably isn't helping either. And bringing her back up. Okay, here comes 1,500 feet. And I'm a little bit slow. A little bit slow, trying to get back onto my heading. There you go. There's 80 knots, there's 1,500 feet, but I'm descending. Got to slow down a little bit, get back on my heading. Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're getting you in a good spot here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going into the twilight zone. <laughs> oh, there's 1,600 feet, man. This is messed up. <laughs> Save Lake traffic, helicopter cabbage G2. Hack Lima Papa, just east of the powerhouse. Over Save Lake, 1,500 feet heading northbound. Okay, here comes 80, feet, 80 knots. I'm 1,580 feet, so I'm 80 feet high. I need to correct that. Just about on my heading. I'm having a hard time holding that heading. There it comes 1,500 feet. There you feet. go, now you're getting it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> heading's gone. Yeah, heading's gone. <laughs> I slowed down a little bit. There's 1,500 feet. Coming back to that heading. All right. I think we're going to call it there. All right. Okay. I have control. You have control. Let's check back in a couple minutes here. <laughs> All right, you guys. I think I'm recovered from that now. Um, it takes a lot of intense uh, concentration, which is something that's really important to remember. Uh, this is a good exercise for me because it's good to remember for your students um, sort of how intense of an exercise this is because as an instructor, it's pretty easy, right? You just hang out there and Super easy. you get to look around, make sure you're not going to fly into anything. and uh, So it's not bad, but um, 
from uh, a student's point of view, like there is a lot of brain work. And it's funny because it's more than just the scanning and trying to fix the helicopter. It's the brain work of trying to fight against what your body is telling you, especially when you have no visual reference outside. Uh, your brain is telling you one thing and your eyes are telling you another thing. And so there's constantly this war going on. Like, no, I have to trust what I'm seeing, not what I'm feeling. Um, and Sam and I were just debriefing about when um, I had my eyes closed and we were in the unusual attitude. And I hope you guys were able to see that in the video. I felt something completely different. He's sitting there laughing. Um, I, I felt something completely different than what was actually going on with the helicopter. And, and that's the reality. So you're, you're never going to be able to trust um, what you see and, or sorry, what you feel. Um, you have to open your eyes, look at those instruments, take a deep breath and just trust what you see. Um, not what you feel so and you can see how much that's exaggerated over water yes exactly exactly with even just that tiny little bit of reference just out the side uh, little bits there of land your mind your eyes have the ability to pick up that little bit of reference and say okay I'm fine and it kind of relaxes you and puts a little bit of spatial awareness but when it's just kind of a glassy water surface there's no reference oh man it, it totally messes with you and I I as an instructor really enjoy doing that uh, flying people <laughs> over water because they're doing really good usually, and then all of a sudden you get them over water, and they're just like, like nose diving at the water or something, it's, and it's it's very instant. <laughs> instant and it's very intriguing to watch. So, uh, so that's always really enjoyable. But uh, so this is just a, a little lesson for you guys, whether you guys fly or not, whether you guys have flown on instruments or not. Maybe a lot of you that are watching this have actually flown uh, IFR in clouds, um, so you have lots of experience in this. But um, I just wanted to give this. Uh, as a little demonstration for you guys and for those that um, that don't fly at all it's kind of an interesting life lesson as well to uh, sometimes not always just trust what you feel but uh, you have to trust what you see as well so um, and sometimes what you see is is very important but um, anyways interesting lesson here i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, until next time we're going to talk to you later see ya see ya